Let's look at it in action. So to do so, I would like to invite to the stage the product manager for Mendix Studio, Daniel Dom. Good morning, good morning. So today I'm going to show you how a business user will use Mendix Studio to build a sim simple yet valuable app that will improve a team process. So suppose for a moment I'm a product manager in an insurance company and um, we have run a marketing campaign and now I would like my team as a one-off to just follow up on all those people that have not yet responded, to just call them up and see if they can make their purchase. Where do I start? I start with the data. So let's switch the screen because as a business user, I have access to backend systems and that hold data. So these are the people I would like to call. And as a user, I can also create an Excel ex export from this data. It has company and contact data. Let's just have a brief look at that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is a perfect export. And um, yeah, so now I, all I need to do is you know, find a way for my team to start working from this list. There's about 10 people that will work from it. So how do I do this? Let's build an app because the Mendix platform is now offering a new feature. It's called import your own data and start from your own data with Excel. Let's just start that and said demo. So what Daniel is doing here, instead of taking one of the many templates that we offer to start building a new application, he's choosing the option, the new option to start from an Excel sheet. So we will uh, select that and then build a new app based on that, uh, that spreadsheet. Indeed. Last time I used a spreadsheet, it was a complete mess. Everyone started emailing versions to each other. You know, I put it on some network drive where nobody could actually find it. It was a complete mess. So now I'm just going to use the Excel file um, to start an app. Here we go. So it says, kickstart your app with existing data. I can just browse to the file I just had. Uh, contacts export. I can open that. And this will now discover the data that's in that sheet. Even has found a relationship, an association in Medix terms between contact and company. I can see it has found all the, the records there. It has different types, enumerations, dates, times, strings. It all looks very well. So what I'm going to do is just import the data. What it's doing right now is grabbing all the data that I have in the sheet. It is generating a domain model on top of that. It is generating um, page um, uh, admin uh, admin page for that data, packaging all that putting it in a cloud environment, ready for me as a user to, uh, to start using it. So what's basically happening here, happening here, we are going from an Excel spreadsheet to a working live application with all the data included in less than a minute. Here it is. Here's an app. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, ordinary spreadsheet. I can now start working from this and add the logic that I need. Because what do I do? What do I need? I need my team to, um, to, uh, to be able who, uh, who to call from their mobile. So I'm closing the preview now, and I'm landing in Mendix Studio. This is edit mode. What I see now is a new view. It's a spreadsheet preview of the data, the domain model. And I can see, again, the, the, the columns or attributes that it has found. Contacts, companies are all there. And uh, I can add columns. For example, a status column that my team can set. So we can easily extend the data model that we just imported from Excel and add some new attributes to it. So what Daniel is doing now is adding a, st a status attribute so that we can say, like, if he calls somebody, is he, if he, he or she is interested or that we need to follow up. So we're ju just adding some status uh, uh, captions here so that, that we can yep. uh, indicate that in the application that we are building. So what we will do now is actually add that attribute so we will see it in this view, but also in the other views. You have two views on the same data model. So this is the entity relationship view, where you actually see the contact and the company and the new attribute. Now we set the default uh, value to open. So, so now what I need to do is create a page, of course, to launch um, uh, for my team to use. So there's this big orange button here. Let me just attach a page to it, create a new page for it. Um, so new page, and I call this list to call. So that's the list that my team is going to use. Let's use one of the templates, list of contacts. Sounds great. Let's just use that. And here it is. It's a list that I'm now starting to configure. So Daniel added a new page based on one of the page templates that's uh, available in Mendix Studio, so that this makes it easy for you to um, build new pages uh, based on certain patterns that we see that are often used in, uh, in these type of applications. So what we need to do now is to connect the UI to the underlying data. So Daniel connected the list view, so the list of data, to the um, contact entity, adding the attributes 
to visualize them on the screen. So also connecting the phone number so that if we open this on a mobile device, we can immediately call the contact. Um, so once we've done that, there we go. I'm now ready to, of course, you know, my team members, when they phone them, they want to set what the outcome was. So let's build the logic for that. We call this, well, what if, what if they're interested, just build the logic for that. And this is going to call a microflow. So we build now a simple microflow to say that if we hit interested to switch the status from this contact from open to interested. So let's see what it suggests. Oh, check if it exists. Then uh, modify the contact. I want to set, of course, the status field, right? The new status field. So let me check what are the fields there. Status, here it is. Oops. Here we go. Status, and I'm sending it to interested. Here we go. That's the value that I want so to have. So just almost Excel-like building a little expression to set it to. Uh, did you also configure a, uh, a filter on your page? I did. OK, I did. so we only see the open items on the. Yeah. So let's look at it in action. So we, we changed the application. We added an attribute. We built some UI on top of it, a piece of logic to change uh, to a different state. And now we look at the updated application here. And let's look at it on the mobile, because that's what my team will be using. So here we go. I'm going to get started. Hey, here's my list. It has customers or contacts there. It has phone numbers. I can phone them from my mobile. And I can set them to interested. So what if Mrs. Anne Slater is interested? I click interested. And yay, they disappear from the list. So my team now knows what to do. They can call. And that's all fine. So that's two more minutes. And now we have an updated application that's exactly doing what Daniel wants it to do uh, for his company. But the dashboard is empty. And as a team manager, I would like to know how the workload is spread between the members of my team. So what I'm doing, I'm just heading over to the dashboard, which is a page already in the, in the, um, in the app. I'm going to just add a pie chart that separates it by So region. Daniel is searching now through the toolbox to all the building blocks that are available. They can you just drag and drop on your screen. In this case, a pie chart. We can connect it to the underlying data so that we can visualize uh, how our contexts are spread uh, over the different uh, regions. So we just connect uh, uh, two attributes. Let's launch it straight away, see what it does. And then we update the application again and see if we have the data in action. Heading over to the dashboard. Here we go. It splits my workload across teams. That's all very well. Great. So my team has done really well. They have phoned, and this was a one-off situation. But now, actually, they've done so well. I'd just like to do this every month, maybe every week. So I realized that it's probably more useful for me to connect to live data rather than uh, uh, doing this spreadsheet export all the time. So to achieve that, I know that I'm never going to do this myself. Luckily, I know a guy who can. So Andre, I'm calling you for help now. Um, can you connect to live data, please? So that's the live collaboration in Mendix Studio so that you can collaborate with people that can help you extend the application if it becomes a bit more complex, like integrations. And we will uh, later in this keynote see how we do that uh, in Studio Pro. So, so thank you, Daniel. Thank you. So we saw how Mendix 8 with Mendix Studio enables you to quickly go from an Excel spreadsheet to a working application. But the thing is with these type of applications, they become, can become quickly serious. Because, I mean, if you start using that application, it maybe becomes uh, a business-critical business system. And that's actually what happened um, at HelloFresh. So Connor and Adrian are makers at HelloFresh. And HelloFresh was, a couple of years ago, was the fastest growing company in Europe, according to the Financial Times. And they're still growing fast. But everything around their recipes was managed using spreadsheets. So they built a Mendix app for that, to manage that whole process, which is a mission-critical system. So it just shows you that you can go from spreadsheets, but then you need to be able to keep growing and scaling the system. And that's why I think that no code without low code is a no-go. And that's why we have Mendix Studio in Mendix 8. And as you can see, there are more announcements coming. You can probably guess a couple of them, because uh, Derek already introduced uh, a number. But we also have some great new things. So let's move on to Studio Pro. In 2018, we did 12 releases, so 12 monthly releases with 42 new features. 
and then 131 delighters, so small improvements to make the, make the lives of our users easier. And 43 of these uh, delighters were actually straight, coming straight from the ID forum. So I want to thank all of you, the community, for your engagement on the ID forum. And let's commit to increasing this number this year. And as I said, Mendix Studio, Mendix Studio Pro are built on the same common platform. So that means that if you build on the model in Mendix Studio or in Studio Pro, it's always in sync with each other. So automatically, we did a lot of improvements in that whole process so that you can always extend the model that somebody in Mendix Studio is building and the other way around. But that's not the only thing that we improved in Studio Pro. So we did a lot more to improve the collaboration between more advanced users uh, and maybe more people with a business background. So the first thing is that we are extending Connector Kit with Microflow support. So that means that if you are building a more complex module, you can expose the API points of that module as Microflow activities that then can be used by other users in Mendix Studio Pro from straight from the toolbox or even in Mendix Studio. Secondly, we are adding design properties to Studio Pro. That means that if you have a designer creating a theme package, defining all the design properties for the different widgets um, in, your, uh, in the theme package, then a developer can just style and design the application using all these uh, settings without being a CSS expert. And then last but not least, we are fastly improving diffing and conflict resolution. Something you have been waiting for for quite a while, so it's there. We will uh, increase it a lot, visualizing the entire model structure, showing the diff uh, much more visually, and making it uh, much easier to co collaborate on advanced models. <laughs> We're also adding more extensibility options to Studio Pro. So OQL is coming to Microflows. So in addition to XPath, you can use OQL, much more advanced queries, uh, straight uh, from your microflow, giving you uh, much more uh, possibilities to, uh, to, to write advanced queries. And we're also adding JavaScript actions to Nanoflows. And not only that, we are actually integrating a full-blown JavaScript editor inside Studio Pro. So you can just go to the web, search for some JavaScript to extend your model, copy and paste it in the, in the modeling environment in Studio Pro, and then you're ready. So all fully integrated. So we hope that with all these new features, Studio Pro users like Bart um, have a much easier job to create complex landscapes, because Bart is doing an impressive job at Decra, building a whole landscape of applications, uh, ranging from uh, integration, uh, offline mobile, workflow automation, uh, even uh, decision management, document generation, and exposing all the data through via OData through BI tools. So that's Studio Pro in Mendix 8.